This is Distant Replay. Time for episode four of Last Chance You, the basketball version, East L.A. College. It is on Netflix. If you haven't been watching it, we recommend it. Go back, keep up, watch episode by episode with us. Or as you as you're binging it, you can go back through and listen to our opinion, our take on the show. We're recapping every episode today. It is all about episode four, which is, I guess, essentially the John Mosley episode, right? It's all about, essentially, it's all about coach. It all focuses on him, his background. So we got a lot of the questions, Mike, that you wanted answered on our previous episodes. We started to kind of get some of those for you. Hey, look, we got a deeper dive into John Mosley in this episode. And look, this guy's awesome. I think that's you pretty love him, clear. You? I, love, I love what he stands for. I love what he's about. I love his commitment to his craft. I respect guys like that. Yeah, no doubt. You, you respect somebody that's got that passion, right? That, that knows their passion, follows their passion. And that's what we, fi- we find out more and more about, about Mosley. And the good thing is we kind of find out how he ends up at this JUCO, right? We knew he played there, but kind of his story and his path to get to this point kind of gets revealed. So we learned first that he's, he has a really good basketball background, which we knew because he has, you know, he was a star at East LA College. But that's a guy that, that had opportunity and thought that he had an opportunity to play at a very high D1 level was getting recruited by some, you know, some pretty notable teams, San Diego State, San Jose State, some, you know, these California colleges, but grades, one class, right? Which is kind of the, which is probably why it relates with a lot of these guys, right? Just fell short of, of, of the academics he needed. So he ends up going to the Masters College. Did you know anything about the Masters besides the golf uh, tournament? <laughs> yeah, besides the golf tournament? No, I had never heard of this university before. But it's a, a religious um, university, which, explains a lot of his passion for you know spreading the gospel and being involved in his church his community church where we see him working with uh you know a sunday school class and really leading young people which he's, he does day in day out and if thought it was interesting the way he presented it mike this was my calling this is what god wanted me to do i i, I didn't felt i didn't get that one credit i needed but it drove me the path that i wanted to i needed to be on and and, and i'm very happy with the way things turned out yeah, he's a guy who's at very, very much at peace with the situation. Like I said before, very committed to what he's doing and his mission, sort of um, coaching this basketball team. Um, I think it's a he strikes a good, delicate balance where he's very religious, but realizes, and he even says this, that he's at a state school, right? And he realizes there's a time and place for him to sort of um, um, go into the religious aspect of things, if you will. And he only really breaks it out in situations where it seems to be really needed from what I've seen. Yeah, in very intimate settings, you know, that's that's exactly when he's one on one will put you exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. not it never seems like he's preaching. No, no. You never kind of get that sense from him, uh, just by seeing him on the court. And I love that they were like, Yeah, he you know, God never cusses. He he says a lot of other things and they have a great kind of sequence of him being like, you know, that mug took it to the basket or whatever else. And it's funny because you kinda hear those things or you probably said those things as a kid. You know, so that you weren't getting in trouble in class or something like that. But he still kind of talks like that today. Yeah, that's was, that was fine. It is right, though. I mean, you assume. I think it was Robinson that said it. You assume with how ballistic he goes that yeah. he's cursing. But if you really listen, he's not. <laughs> he's getting on him. And we see him get on some guys in this episode as well. But I thought it was also interesting is his career path in terms of coaching. Because who was he uh, an assistant coach on? What staff was that? Santa Clara? No, Cal State. Cal State Bakersfield. Bakersfield. Okay. Yeah, they have a picture of the team picture. So, he, you know, he coached at that that higher level and, you know, by all accounts could still be there. But what was important to him was the priority of family. And he actually, you know, we talk about it. People talk about it all the time, right? Oh, well, family is important. Well, he's always backed up. It seems like he's backed up everything that he's done in his life with his actions, right? It's not just talk. Same thing here. He wasn't getting enough time with his kids, being on the road all the time. And he decided, I want to stay in basketball and coach but also want to be close to my family. And this gave him that opportunity. It's a step down. I think by, you know, most coaches would tell you that's a, you're taking a step down for that job. But for him, it fit all his needs. And I'm sure that you thought that story with his daughter, that really kind of opened his eyes. That probably stuck out to you, right? Yeah, that was a, that was a, that was a good story he told. I mean, that was, that was one that kind of struck a chord for sure. I mean, you could see, you could picture being in that situation now, you know, right. Like where, you know, um, and, Look, I, I'm sure Ben. I know you know a ton of college coaches, and I've known some some of my personal friends that have gone the college coaching route. And those hours they put in, man, they're real, and they're forever. It never changes, hmm. you know. 
So I, I completely get why he didn't want to devote, you know, why he, he's basically prioritizing his family over, over recruiting and, and, um, you know, all the ancillary things that come along with being a division one coach. And again, he, it wasn't just lip service. He actually, he actually did it. Yeah. And that story with his daughter, like she was like, when he came home one night, she's like, you're staying here tonight, dad, you're not leaving. You're not going back on the road. We wanted you to be home tonight. And it opened up his eyes. So good dude. And, and I think by all account, like every, every episode I get more and more on, on coach Mosley's side. And I, you know, I wasn't ever not backing him or, did, you know, thought poorly of him, but every episode that comes out, you kind of know his true character more and more. And you pull for the guy and you want, you want him to win and you want him to be, to be successful. He is successful, but get to that next level. But then it also makes you drives you crazy seeing the kids, right? Cause we got to get back to the team and the players a.k.a. Joe Hampton, and we get more to Sean Heiler in this episode. But it really just drives you crazy when you see these guys not taking full advantage of this when he's kind of sacrificed all his life to help these guys along with being with his family, you know? Yeah, it's this was not a good episode for the players <laughs> this, as far as making them look good. This made, the episode made Mosley look good. The players came off as a little bit selfish in this episode. Again, I know we say this every recap, but it could be the way the program's edited or they could really be really selfish. But even Hyler in this episode, like the second thing started not going his way, you know, it, 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 they just all get to the same place where I think they're, they're just frustrated. They're at this East LA college, no matter how much they win, they want to be somewhere else. And the second something doesn't go their way on the court, that's where their mind automatically goes. And it doesn't seem like it's only Joe Hampton. No, it's yeah, it's 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 all the main players in the in the show, but the other kind of basketball theme we get is backups. So we get this whole theme of we find out about we learn about the other guys on the team besides the guys that are starters, right? We learn about some of the guys that we've seen, but we ha we haven't heard from or really seen play, and they haven't really been involved. We kind of get a couple of sound bites from these guys, and we learn about trying to balance those minutes. And it's a, it's a situation that every coach is up against, right? You have to. Try to find that rotation, that eight-man rotation. You don't want to run ten or eleven guys like, like they're having to do early in the season, trying to figure it out. But it's hard because these guys, maybe even more so than than a D one level, might because these guys have to be able to play to audition to get to that next level. I mean, the guys at the D one level, sure, there's a you know a lot of them have the aspirations of the NBA, but at that point, you're not fighting for minutes to to, to try to impress the NBA. Like those guys are going to figure it out no matter what. Right. But in, co in college, you want as much exposure as you can get. So that's why trying to balance this is even tougher. And these guys get so upset with him when they're not getting that opportunity. Yeah. You know what it is? It's I think with junior college, the more I'm kind of learning from this show is you're either a one year Juco guy or you're a two year Juco guy. And I think a big, yeah. a big, big part of it is these guys who are two year Juco guys coming to grips with that and looking at their evolution to getting to that division one scholarship as being like a two year process, as opposed to they probably figured, you know what, I'll go to Juco for a year and then I'll go D1. It's sinking in for a lot of them. Like, oh, this is gonna be longer, a longer haul than I thought. And I think, you know, it's a bummer for them, but at the same point, they have to stay focused so they develop and get to that ultimate goal. But along the way, you're just dealing with a bunch of guys that are just pissed off half the time if they're not doing well. And it doesn't matter because this team's still playing well, you know, and, and you continue to kind of see these guys not happy with, with kind of the state of it. And again, I think a lot of it's being played up to the camera because they have a camera there. Like, I don't know how, I don't know if Hyler really gets upset every time he misses the basket in practice, you know, like, I feel like, yeah, maybe you're a little exaggerating a little bit there. I get you want to make shots, but it's practice, right? You know, you're going to miss a bunch. You're going to miss more than you make. That's just part of it. Like, why are you getting so upset all the time in practice over a missed shot? I don't know. But so that was kind of a, a running theme in the show is, is that backup and trying to come to come to grips to that talent. And I thought Coach Robinson was perfect, right? Everybody's got talent to get to this to this spot. But at some point your talent runs out for everybody. There you get to a point where your talent no longer can carry you any further. There's some great ones that get all the way to the very end, right? LeBron, MJ, Kobe, but the rest of them there's going to be a spot where you just can't go any further. Yeah, he Look, we found out a little bit about his background, that he played Division One basketball, uh, Robinson. But I'm still looking for that deeper dive into him because he gives very good perspective. I love the guy. Yeah. It's almost like he has like a background in like TV or movies, like where <laughs> he just articulates his point so clearly and succinctly, you know? He doesn't use too many words. Like he gets right to the point. But whatever he says and whenever he talks in this documentary, it resonates. Yeah, he's got that 
that kind of it factor, right? That personality that you just you just kind of you, you kind of attach to him, and you're kind of pulled in his direction. Like he's just kind of got that that it factor, I think, when you listen to him. And I even even see it with that coach Mosley, like watching him talk to the team in that in that meeting, right, where they're going through stats again and going through the numbers. You know, Mosley's just sitting back and kind of just listen, like just really into what he's saying. And uh, yeah, I, I hope we learn more about Rock, Coach Robinson because he is. And a very interesting character, and I, I think he's a, is an awesome dude as well. And you kind of, you know, you kind of feel like you're really attached to these guys every episode that goes by. But really, the arc to this um, story is about Mosley. But a long way in this episode, the Kobe death. So I was wondering, you know, when we were kind of figuring out what this, this season was, you know, exactly where we were. I knew this had to be kind of coming up at some point, and it's even a different perspective and a, and a better perspective because these guys are in LA, right? You know, a guy like KJ Allen who grew up there and, and, you know, idolized Kobe, all these guys did anybody play basketball of this age, right? You grew up pulling for Kobe for them to be in the middle of it. I thought there would be a little bit more on that. They did, pra- they did cancel practice and they had a couple guys talking about perspective, but I honestly thought it'd be a bigger deal for all those guys Almost to the point where they could have, I thought they could have made an entire episode out of it, not knowing what the kind of content they meant. They might not have had enough content. I just thought that would be a situation where you could produce enough for a full episode. Yeah, it almost like so they they, they went over how Kobe's death affected these kids again, because most of them are from the L.A. area or they're just of the age where they really look up to Kobe Bryant. But it seems like it went from that to like, are the kids going to be too rusty if we give them two days off of practice pretty quickly? <laughs> yeah. And then it went into like, hey, they're back at practice and they're rusty because we gave them a couple of days off, you know, for Kobe Bryant to kind of, you know, digest that. And the rest of the episode was kind of like how they're not like in tip top shape and t- and not performing at the level they were before they got the couple of days off. It's like, well, would a couple of days off really impact that much? I don't know. It just seemed like it transitioned quick from like, we're sad about Kobe to like, we're not as sharp because we had him, we let them take a couple of days off because of Kobe. Yeah, I, I thought it was kind of a very interesting and odd the way it played out. I just thought it would have been a much bigger deal for them being there on top of everything else. And those guys had to be, they all idolized the guys. So I, I, I just thought it was kind of a, like a side note, you know, yeah, like, even, even like, like he had been like traded. It. That's kind of like how it felt like he had been traded to yeah. a different team rather than he tragically passed away. Yeah. Like Mosley like went in, into how like his daughter is the same age as Kobe's daughter and they played against each other. Mm hmm. But he just like said it in passing, right? Like it was like it's like well, can we de- delve, we could probably delve a little bit more into that, right? I thought you know? it, he would been a little more introspective on his life and his family, especially the time, because we hear about his family so much. And again, we don't know how it's how this thing's edited, but I just thought it became just kind of a very very small side uh, sidebar to everything else going on. Where I thought it would have been a major aspect of this season, especially now that we know that. We're like a, a month and a half away from everything shutting down, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that became a real thing here too. So I'm interested. Obviously, that's the biggest shoe that has to drop in this season. We'll see how that unfolds. Yeah. Because what I'm not aware of is if like the junior college tournament starts earlier than the regular NCAA tournament. I'm not even aware of that. Right. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. Anything else in this episode, Ben? Yeah. So a couple a couple more things on on Mosley before we get out of here. I, I thought the scene with him at practice, because, again, you kind of talk about how he's trying to get on them because they're rusty, they're not going hard, they're not playing hard. Again, backups aren't taking advantage of every opportunity, practice, and game that they have, right? And that's kind of the, the theme here is make make use of your time. You don't know how much you have. You don't know, how, you know, you don't know when that opportunity is going to be there, so treat every minute like it's the minute of your life that's going to determine everything else. So he's on him there, but he shuts down practice and doesn't talk for like five minutes. Gets him on the baseline. And then just walk circles around the gym for like four or five minutes. I thought that was a little odd. That scene. They said they made it sound like it's not that it happens. Maybe not a lot, but it's not. It's not uncommon. Right. And they're all kind of laughing about it. And also, have you ever kind of found yourself when Mosley's going off? He likes to repeat the same question a lot, right? Like, yeah. How much do you really? care? How yeah, much how many... do you care? <laughs> yeah. How much do you care? I always get so uncomfortable. Am I like? Is he waiting for an answer? Does he want these guys to respond, or is he just driving his point home? Like, and he never gets a out. response. No, he never that, gets a response. No one ever says anything. Everyone's too scared to say a word. <laughs> I don't blame him. I just don't know if he wants a response. That's why I keep saying it. Or if he's just trying to drill it into him and get that point home. I can't figure that out. But every time he gets into one of those rants, 
and he's asking the same question over and over. I'm just like, I get uncomfortable. Like, I just want somebody just to, 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 to answer it. Answer the guy. And the, and the best point, the whole part is when he's going on the rants, it initially the camera starts at him, but then it pans to the players while he's screaming in the background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, there was a, a quick shot of KJ during, I think it was during probably when he was yelling at him, I don't remember. But KJ had his, um, air, I, I guess it's an AirPod, I don't know, but an earbud tucked behind his ear. Did you see that? No. It was I didn't a wild notice. move. Like, he oh, just like man. picked it up and put it on top of his ear, like you would put a pencil behind your ear. Like, why wouldn't you just leave the ear earbud in your ear? <laughs> it, like, uh, I, it just seemed like a really a wild look. Yeah, cool. that was a total sidebar. But uh, you had a game in this one. It seems like the format of this is like lead in, lead in, lead in game, and then episode over. So this game was Pasadena City, who was no good. Same thing, Mike. You see, like a lot of kind of all oh, teams not playing well early, but we started to see these guys, and I think they kind of set it up because the backups telling their story, and then a lot of these guys got a, a chance to play because they won by 30 points. But we see Joe Hampton play, and again, he's a guy that I've got no doubts can play D1 right now. I mean, he does. there's not a whole lot he can't do. A big man that can run the floor, who passes, like he's, he's an elite passer for a big man, and he's, he's got a shot too, but I'm most impressed with the way he can pass the ball and just his vision, and you see that, a bunch of no-look passes in this episode. That guy can play. Feel for the, he has a great feel for the game. He's one of those. He knows the game well. Great feel for the game. Understands spacing. All those little things. And he happens to be what, like six nine. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, he is for sure. And that's why I think everyone gets frustrated with him. Yep, because he can get to that next level. But we finish this off, so they they the game ends, and they usually work out afterwards, head to the gym, and it's kind of a weird. This thing turns on a dime because it seems like the guys are relaxed because they played well, right? Everybody got a chance to play. They won by 30. They go work out. But you kind of have a couple guys that don't really want to work out. I think Joe was one of them. Joe had like, he had, what do you have, like a, a reservation at a at some kind of restaurant he had to get to that had great like fried rice or noodles or something. I don't even know what he said. But you had that. And then Coach Robinson's like, well, it's Joe. Joe, you know, you guys aren't Joe, <laughs> which I thought was that guy. The guy tells it like it is. But he gets to the weight room and like they're kind of joking around with Coach. And I thought it seemed like it was like kind of a light mood. But then all of a sudden, mostly just just shut it down and got super serious. Yeah, this was the rant of the season so far. And I'm interested to see where we go from here. The rant was so explosive. But you want us to go into a little bit of what the rant yeah, was Yeah, what would you make that? of it? He kind of, you know, after he goes on the rant about what he went about the rant on, which is basically like, I'm here, we're all here, sacrificing being away from, from our kids, our family, and – we're happy to do it, but it makes it hard when you guys don't care, essentially. When you when we feel that that you as a team don't care as much as us as coaches. And I can tell you, I've been in that situation as a coach. Again, not at this level, okay, obviously. But there's no more lonely feeling as a coach is when you feel like you care more than the players do. And you get to that point at least once a year with the team you're coaching because you're just around each other so much. <laughs> And I think this was his one time. I think this was, you know, a time where he felt like that for this particular season. It was essentially like, you guys think I'm the bad guy. Yeah, I'm making you work out. Or, yeah, I'm, I'm pushing you guys in practice. But I look at everything that I'm sacrificing for you. Literally for you. And you, and you think I'm the bad guy. You're calling me the bad person here. And I'm giving up all this stuff for you. And you could care less. And it was a pretty eye-opening scene, it and and you get it, yeah. I mean, I can see that he's probably he probably runs up into this every season with guys, and you kind of feel for him because you understand how important his family is to him, right? He, he changed his whole career. He sac he didn't just sacrifice that night, you know, post game meal with his his family. He sacrificed his career, like maybe coaching a D one team right now, and he's in this moment. It's so important to him, but you guys could care less. And, you know, I think that's kind of the I, – I, my my guess is that's kind of like the high point of the season. And I think things start kind of coming back together and this team kind of starts playing together and there's less of the drama. I could be wrong, but I kind of feel like this, we've kind of hit that crescendo in the season and maybe from this point kind of starts to level back off and go down towards the end of the year and then we'll see how it all plays out. But definitely that was, I think, the, the, the uh, I don't know, the, 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 most, the most critical scene probably so far. Yeah, he got so specific in the rant, too. 
like saying like, you know, my son had a game tonight and I missed it, you know, mm -hmm. and he kept on repeating that. He got very specific about how personal it was, what it was for him that he was offended with how these guys were acting, you know, when they were lifting weights. So I, I think that hit home to the players. I think they took that seriously. You would think so, Mike, but <laughs> who knows, buddy? Who knows? All right. What else, Mike? I think that covers this episode. I thought it was yep. a really good episode overall. I thought it was a very good one. And I think, like I said, I think it's going to set the tone for the rest of the season where it's like, okay, we're getting down, going down the stretch, the back stretch of the regular season. It's time to really get prepared for the playoffs because throughout the whole season, we have a, a, a countdown scroll telling us how many days until the playoffs. And I believe we're about two or three weeks away from the playoffs at this point. Yeah, it was 24 days when Kobe passed away, 24 days to the playoffs, which yeah. I thought was odd, was was ironic. But yeah, we got to be pretty close. So I want to see how this thing plays out. I want to learn more about a couple of guys, Coach Robinson especially, but I want to see how this finishes because, I, you know, here we are a year later and you know, maybe they're they're playing now, but I don't, I don't see how any way they got that season done. Not, where, yeah, not with I, where I, they I, are, nothing being postseason yet. You know, I hate that COVID wiggles his way into everything here, but you everything. know it's coming eventually, so we'll see when it happens. All right, we'll have episode five coming up next on the podcast. Please hit subscribe wherever it is you listen. We appreciate all the feedback and keep helping us grow. That's all we ask, and uh, we appreciate it. So, Mike, we'll uh, catch up again next week. We'll have, again, a game, a documentary recap for this show right now until we finish it up, but also true crime sports episodes coming out every single week as well. You got it. Until next time.